I'm so ready. I'm always ready to talk, Michael. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Get that load up there. Loading, loading. And, and we're rolling. Cool. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Movie Mood. I'm your host, Alex Van Horn. I'm John Alberto. This is the uh, season two, if you will, of Movie Mood. Um, yeah, we have so far... Our highest amount of views, I believe, is maybe 18 to 24. Uh, so it's a pretty good number. It's no, uh, it's no Joe Rogan, but fine. Um, yeah. Yeah, working, working our way along. And today we are, we're starting off our new season with a topic that is very near and dear to Alex. And sure. that, is, uh, that is the filmmaker, Michael Mann. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And... Uh, yeah, he's a big, big inspiration to me. I feel like he's a very underrated filmmaker, very underrated Hollywood filmmaker, at least. Um, yeah, and I love his movies. Nice. Yeah, I remember, it must have been over a decade ago now, I was inter- interviewing you for our high school newspaper, and I asked what directors had the biggest impact on you, and the first one that you said was Michael Mann. Um, mm-hmm. So... So what is it about Michael Mann that, that inspires you? Is it his music? Is it his, uh, is it his lighting? Is it the taut nature of his films? What is it? Yeah, I think all those things. Um, well, I feel like uh, certainly nowadays he's not as big of an influence as he probably was on me when I was in high school, but he's, he still is like, yeah, very influential. And I can't like not think of his movies when I go make movies um, or if I'm thinking about movies that I like or like the, you know, styles that I like in a movie, certainly similar to Scorsese. I love his, his music choices always. Uh, his soundtracks are bangers. Absolutely. Strongly um, agree with that. Yeah. Uh, his, yeah, his sense of style is really pretty remarkable. It's very, um, his movies are very beautiful. Even if they're bad, they're usually pretty beautiful looking, sort of like Ridley Scott or uh, Tony Scott. Yeah, I, um, I've seen a lot of his movies and I watched two this week to, uh, to prepare for the podcast and just kind of get, a, uh, get into a headspace about him. And, yeah. and one of the things that I really noticed was the lighting in his movies, hmm. um, you know, you know, nighttime scenes that are very brightly lit. And, and it's, it seems like it's kind of a, tro- a trend throughout a lot of his movies. Um, yeah. That's cool. For sure. Yeah. He really kind of defines that like 80s style, like Miami Vice. That's like purely, you know, he didn't direct any of the episodes, but that's purely his, his style. And I think he has a lot of imitators. Um, I mean, you could look at something like, uncut gems and uh a lot of the safety brothers uh work and also like a movie like spring breakers which i recently rewatched, mm-hmm. has very some very michael mann uh esque uh style and themes sure and and i even think and you and i both love the safety brothers but i i even think some very mainstream directors have been influenced by Mann as well people like For nolan sure. and fincher yeah yeah that's yeah i totally forgot about that but it's true like especially i think christopher nolan with the dark knight and um a lot of his movies it seems like uh michael mann's style it's like he's taking these formulas for hollywood movies but he there's an added realism to them and then there's also just a lot of uh depth as far as like the character research that's being done, the like research onto into the world, and also in the themes, which have a lot to do with like, I would go so far as to say like a lot of his movies are pretty postmodern. You can make that argument that like there's all these people existing in you know these cities and like having these lives that have to do with like uh, cities and stuff like that. So yeah, um, I think Nolan is definitely a a good precursor or a successor uh, successor. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so I think, um, you know, back when, back when you were in high school and you were being heavily influenced by him, 
he yeah. had just kind of come off what when I look at his filmography, I would kind of argue the his peak years. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. You know, I, I think I think for him the the nineties into the early two thousands were when he was making some of his absolute best movies. And I know he made some great stuff in the eighties too, but I think yeah. he found a lot of success in the nineties. Definitely. I think the nineties were definitely his his peak. You've got, you know, Last of the Mohicans, Heat, which I just recently rewatched, and The Insider, which I uh in high school i had like uh i had when i first started coming to uh stafford high school i just had like an ipod uh which is like a a precursor to an iphone for the you guys who don't know and i i had the insider and episodes of the colbert report and i used to just watch that in class when we weren't doing anything love it yeah so i've seen like the insider and heat and oh so you were one of those cool kids with a video ipod yeah oh man it got stolen though like <laughs> first semester i was like oh it got stolen <laughs> it's gone now that's tough um yeah so which one do you want to talk about because uh i mean i yeah we could start at the beginning but in a lot of ways like we could we could meander go to different movies i for one would love to talk about the first movie of his that i saw which was Last of the Mohicans. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I think um, I think we can certainly meander. I don't think we have to go movie by movie. Um, so yeah, I think Last of the Mohicans was probably the first one I saw too. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's and it's uh, funny because it's it's so thematically it's completely different from the rest of his movies. Yeah. Um, you know, it's a it's a period piece based on the James Fenimore Cooper novel, of course. Um, versus almost all of his other movies that I can think of, you know, take place more or less in the present day in a major city um, with kind of a crime element to them. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. And it has similarities. Like you, you wouldn't think that is one of his movies if you just kind of turned it on because, you know, it doesn't take place in a city. It's not about cops versus robbers um but it certainly still has a lot of the same i would say it has the same themes but it's just set in a different different place you know it still has these you know the um character of um i'm blanking on his name hawkeye Hawkeye, you know? yeah. he has his like crew of you know his native american family that they have their like lifestyle and their way of living and it comes into contact with you know the uh british colonial and you know in the midst of the uh, French and Indian war. And it's sort of like, it's sort of similar that they're kind of a group that would be similar to like Thebes or uh, whatever. But uh, yeah, I'm a fan. I'm a fan of that movie. It's a great movie. And I think going back to my point where I was saying it was kind of different from his other movies. I think the thing that told me when I rewatched it, knowing it was a Michael Mann movie, the thing that I was like, Oh yeah, that's a Michael Mann movie is the music. Definitely. Um, yeah yeah Yeah, the music plays a big part and you can tell like he he puts a lot of thought into the music as well like there's this mix of these like tribal drums with these uh like scottish bagpipes so it's definitely about like an intermixing of like america and europe uh which is a big theme of that and uh yeah just a rousing score also and um yeah when did you first see it it's my dad's favorite movie. So I oh, saw it. <laughs> yeah. My dad loves Last of the Mohicans. So it's I saw a, it when I was young. I have to say, like, I could see, <laughs> I could see Michael Mann being like a fan of dad, like dad's being a fan of Michael Mann. <laughs> right. Yeah. Cause his, yeah, yeah. His movies are very like, you know, historically accurate and like about these badasses. Um, so yeah. And, and we could talk about Daniel Day Lewis also in that movie who. Yeah. It's definitely not like your typical Daniel Day Lewis role, but you can see like he got into it, and yeah, it's it's a lot. Oh, for sure. Um, yeah, I mean, I mean, it goes without saying that Daniel Day Lewis is is one of the best actors ever, um, and he very famously is a method actor and and really truly dives into his roles. Um, so I'd be curious to know what he what he did to prepare like if he if he lived off the land if he i think he was like camping a lot i think he went camping yeah and like went running 
because he does a lot of running in that movie. <laughs> yes, he does. Yeah. Yes, he does. For runners such as you and I, perhaps we uh, we're athletes influenced. <laughs> yeah, what can we say? We're athletes. Um, <laughs> yeah. Um, um, yeah, it's it's a great movie. I don't know if it's my favorite of his movies, but it's certainly like I saw it when I was a kid, and I feel like I got really shook by um, Magua when I first saw him, and like the sure. heart the heart scene. I remember just like. I had to like leave the room and I was a kid and I was just like, Oh, but I remember being like, that was a good movie, but I was just intense. Yeah. There are some, uh, yeah, there are some very haunting scenes in, in last of the Mohicans for sure. Yeah. Um, but, uh, beautifully recreated. What do you, what are your thoughts on Duncan? Oh, Duncan. Um, <laughs> so if any of, if any of our viewers are familiar with the pirates of the Caribbean franchise, um, my favorite character in Pirates of the Caribbean is Commodore Norrington. <laughs> and, and, and Duncan is kind of a precursor to, to characters like Norrington in that franchise. Yeah. Um, you know, not, not a bad man, but, uh, but, not, but kind of in the way of our protagonist, if you will. Yeah. Um, but he, his fate is, uh, his fate is uh, undeserved. Yeah, there's certainly some great characters in um, in the movie. You know, you have well Hawkeye, who's you know the original American hero. Uh, uh, you have uh, Madeline Stowe's character, who I will say I I think that Michael Mann is a very good writer of women, uh, but his movies are not necessarily like women centered. They're often very male centric. See, I actually. I actually, as I was watching one of his movies last night, I made note of that and I disagreed with you because I was watching... Was it The Insider? It was The Insider. The Insider is problematic. <laughs> yeah, it, it was a little yeah. problematic in that regard. Yeah. Um, I, I, and then, I think that's the only one I can think of. But yeah, yeah. We can talk, we can talk about that because it's an interesting, um, interesting point. But she's, she's definitely very, like, compared to the other uh, female characters in his movies is very independently minded. Um, and then you have Duncan, who's her uh, lover in the beginning, who is kind of a stiff English man, uh, soldier, white wig, a white wig wearing. Right. Um, and she's kind of like, you know, she's like, should I be with Duncan? Who's this, you know, uh, soldier in the British army? Or should I be with Hawkeye? Who's just, you know, has long hair. And runs around in the woods, <laughs> right? Right. Shoots deer. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. And certainly, like I have to say though that the the love story of Last of the Mohicans is so intense. Oh my goodness! Absolutely. Like, like it's a bit much. <laughs> yeah, it's um, I mean, it's it's kind I of one of those like Titanic level, but I think Titanic gets away with it. It works. I, and I love Titanic. We'll talk yeah. about James Cameron one day. I'm sure I love Titanic, but, but, um, but yeah, the, uh, yeah, it's, it's definitely on a grand scope and I, I don't, I have not read the book, the last of the Mohicans. So I'm not sure if the, uh, the source material is more about the romance or more just about, you know, early, early America, but yeah. Yeah. I, I yeah, I have to check it out, but, uh, I think it's definitely very different. And probably is a little uh, less respectful to Native Americans than the movie is. I'm sure it is. Certainly, yeah. they they have some big um, big names from uh, Native American actors, Wes Studi, and the other guy. I think he was like really big in the '70s. I'm gonna look that guy up. What was that guy's name? Um, he was like a protester at. Was it? Russell Means, yeah. Okay. He was like a protester, I think, of like Wounded Knee or something. I, I'm blanking on the history, but certainly some big names and sure, sure. American uh, acting and then just that world. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And I think that's, um, I think that's certainly commendable that, that they, in the early 90s, where it wasn't a thing where, where other directors were making um you know 1492 conquest of paradise and and things right. of that nature that that 
there was a movie that was uh, respective to for respectful to first Americans being made. So, yeah. And, you know, it's not as good as Dances with Wolves or anything. Oh, come on. <laughs> I have not seen Dances with Wolves, actually, but I, I've never had a desire to see Dances with Wolves either. Uh, I've seen it once. Uh, I, I prefer Last of the Mohicans. It, it looks a long. little more to offer. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> um, but, yeah, I'm a big fan of Last of the Mohicans. I think, one, I think the big thing I really like about Last of the Mohicans that kind of runs through Michael Mann's work is – is the ending i think the ending is really well well put together yeah i think so too and i think um as i watch you know his other movies everything everything does come together well so Mm -hmm. so i have i have one main issue with michael mann that we'll get into later um but but you know i think by the time we wrap everything up it's it's concise it's taught and it's um and it's beautiful. Yeah, like a Michael Mann film. <laughs> right. <laughs> I I do, I have to say, like, he's one of my favorite filmmakers, but obviously, like, every single filmmaker has their good sides and their bad sides. And certainly there are blind spots in his films that, uh, you know, I, like, his movies are very serious. It's kind of like Christopher Nolan movies. There's not, you know, it doesn't, it's not campy, really. It's pretty, like, this is this um, pretty serious movies. Um, but in that seriousness, it's kind of, it's kind of nice. Like he, he does a lot of research and um, you can tell there's kind of a literary background to it. Sure. Um, but yeah, uh, Last of Mohicans is a good one. I think the movie I saw after the Last of Mohicans that kind of blew me away when I was like 12 was uh, Collateral. Yeah, yeah, I think so too. Um, going from from one very famous runner, uh, Daniel Day Lewis, to another very famous runner, Tom Cruise, and uh, now is he like a long distance runner or is he just like a short sprinter? Well, he if you watch his Mission Impossible movies, it, it appears that he is running running a long distance. <laughs> um, so Probably Mission Impossible three. <laughs> yeah, the J.J. Abrams one where he's just yeah. just that long shot. I love it. Um, Sprinting. yeah um collateral is collateral is terrific um yeah it's it's probably one of my two favorite michael mann movies mm. um i think it's i think it's probably one of the more concise of his movies yeah yeah which which i appreciate um and I know it's, I know, you know, when you have a story to tell, you need more time to tell it, but I, yeah. I appreciate, I appreciate a concise movie from now, from now and then. And, it, you know, it takes place over a night and it's just, it's exciting. It's exciting. Yeah. It's probably the closest he comes to like a, a, a Hitchcock movie. Uh, and it definitely goes into that like Hitchcock area towards the end. Um, but it also has those elements of like, you know, driving through LA at night with those cool lights and uh, Tom Cruise's character and Jamie Foxx's character being these like people who work, who love their job. Um, and, but it is, it is concise and it is exciting. Um, and yeah, it's fantastic. I think it doesn't yet, yeah, it doesn't take place over a long period of time, which is nice. And um, it just makes for like a really good action thriller. Yeah. Yeah, so I yeah, that's what I would say about it. It's it's just a very well crafted action thriller, mm-hmm. and I think early Michael Mann. When I think about movies like Thief, um, which it's been a very long time since I've seen Thief, so I probably can't go into details about it. But yeah. but I but what I remember is it is a very very taut, very very concise thr- 